This is Montauk. Thank you. My husband is here today, and, and um, we're very thankful that I get to spend the rest of my life with him. You know, I'm just thankful to be here, to tell you the truth. Hello everyone, I'm Jennifer Velapi. Welcome to Montage. As you're probably well aware, this Thursday is Thanksgiving and the kickoff to the holiday season. For many people, it's a time of family and celebration and good cheer. It's also a time to count your blessings and lend a helping hand to those who may not be so fortunate. Now, if you'd like to spread some holiday cheer this season but aren't quite sure where to go or what to do, coming up a little bit later on, we're going to tell you. Also today, you're going to hear some inspiring stories of people who have faced major traumas in their life, overcome them, and today have much to be grateful for this Thanksgiving. Coming up, plantation police officer and hero Joseph Alou will be joining us. And also when we come back, the truly amazing odyssey of a woman's fight to find her kidnapped children. And yes, this story has a very happy ending. Things to be thankful for when we come right back on Montage. Our next guest has a truly amazing story to tell. For three years, Nabella Henry lived an incredible odyssey that took her halfway around the world to find her kidnapped children. They were taken by their father after a bitter custody battle. Nabella and her children, Ramsey and Nora, join us today. It's good to have you all here. Hi there. Are you guys happy to be back with your mom? Yes. yes. Yeah, I bet, huh? Um, Nabella, tell us what happened. Your ex-husband kidnapped the kids and took them where? Uh, he took them to Lebanon. Mm -hmm. um, he kept them there for a year and then took them to Romania for a year. Then I got the State Department's help and uh, they were supposed to help me get them back from Romania because I filed a hate convention and uh, instead of, they asked me how am I going to pick up the kids and I told them I'd be willing to fly and come get them and instead they knocked on his door, served him the divorce papers and told him that he needs to return to the U.S. with the children and he in turn fled back to Lebanon. So you ended up getting involved with the American Association for Lost Children, which is the t-shirts you're all wearing. Right. And they helped you locate the kids in Lebanon? Well, I knew where they were because I had kept in touch with them. Mm -hmm. um, they did trace the phone number so we could know exactly where they were. And mm -hmm. then I, I kind of know Lebanon because I've been there before. Right. So we went on that. Yeah. Yeah. Ramsey, what did you think not being with your mom? Where did you think she was all that time for three years? I thought that she stayed. I thought that she stayed at home with all by herself. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know nobody who stayed with her. Yeah. Were you kind of mad that your mom wasn't with you anymore? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sad too, I bet, huh? Yeah, it's making me sad. Yeah. So when you did locate them, and with the help of the American Association for Lost Children, you went to Lebanon, you picked them up both at school, right? Yeah. Tell me how that worked. Um, okay, we got into Lebanon um, about 11 that night, uh, Sunday night, and we um, discussed what we are gonna do. And Monday morning about five o'clock, we, um, we, we called the taxi and we headed to do a stakeout on the house. Mm -hmm. it, um, we was gonna see if we can grab them before they get on a school bus. Um, but instead, it was the wrong house. We found that out later. Well, you, you, you did eventually locate them at an American school right. in Lebanon. Now, the kids were, uh, you're seven years old, right? Yes. And Nora, you're five? Yeah? Yes. And they were taken for three years, so they were really quite young when they were taken. When you did see them, um, did you recognize your mom immediately? I didn't know her so good because her hair was a little was a little kind of something else. She, she, it was short. I didn't know that she was my mom. So when she told you you were she was your mom, what did you do? I hugged her and I kissed her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nora, what did what did you think when she came to you and said, "Hi, I'm your mom." I know that. I know that she she was my mom. You knew. Yeah. Did you give her a big hug? Uh, me? No. Well, that must have been pretty amazing for you when you picked them up. Yeah, because I, I was wondering if I would even recognize them. And it, 
See, what happened was, I didn't even wait to see if I can recognize them. There's like 500 kids running around, and it's before they even went into class. They play like in the playground. Right. And I went around and asking like the little kids that I thought were about seven for him, for Ramsey. Do you know Ramsey? And I asked him in Arabic, do you know Ramsey? Do you know Ramsey? Finally, I found these two little girls that said, yes, he's in my class. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, do you see him? They said, no. I said, well, could you look? You know? So they went around for like three minutes, and they said, well, we don't see him. So, I mean, my heart just dropped. I don't even know how long it took, but like, it seemed almost immediately. They said to me in Arabic, there he goes. And he, he was looking down into his book bag, so I didn't even know if I was gonna recognize him or not. Mm -hmm. But as soon, and then I said, Ramsey, when I walked towards him, he, I said, Ramsey, and he looks up, and I knew that was my, you know, that was Ramsey. Mm -hmm. So I said, hi, it's mommy. And his main concern was hi and everything, but he wants to go to class. Oh. You know? <laughs> and then Nora's school bus hasn't hadn't come in yet, so we 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 took Ramsey back out because there was too many people standing around, and um, we took Ramsey back to the car, and he sat with Mark Miller, and we went back in waiting for Nora's school bus to come in, and we had to wait with the principal, right. and I was scared because she was like, uh, "What do you want?" I said, "I want to give my daughter lunch money," and she's like, "Well, you could leave it with me," and I was like. But I really have to tell her something because I'm going to be late for work, late from work today. Right. So she's like, well, you're welcome to wait. So um, we was just about to sit and wait. And I kind of stood up and I was playing with my hands. And I see these little girls coming in from the door. And like the third set of girls, they got to hold hands. The third set of girls, I said to one of the little girls, do you know Nora? And she goes, there she goes. She was right behind her. Yeah. And Nora also was looking down. So when I called, I said, Nora. And she looks up, and Nora got the same face. Yeah. And I was like, hi, Nora, it's mommy. I mean, I didn't even give her a chance to react. So you hopped back on a plane. You came back. I know you spent a lot of money with uh, private detectives that didn't do any good for you in the beginning. But then the American Association for Lost Children, which is a nonprofit organization, right. actually got you through. Your husband had basically just taken the kids for the weekend and, and never showed up, never showed up again. Did you ever suspect <clears throat> he would do something like this? Never. Do never. you do you live in fear that he might try doing something like this again? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know when he's coming. I don't I don't know if he's outside my door. He could be today, tomorrow. I would never know. You just got your children back this past uh, October, the end of October. So really, it's been just about a month now. This will be the first Thanksgiving you all get to spend together um, in a few years. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do? We're actually driving to Texas to spend um, Thanksgiving with Mark and Pat from the association. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's great. We wish yeah. you all a very happy Thanksgiving. You're glad to be back here, huh? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, glad to be back in the USA, huh? Yeah. Well, it was good to have you guys here. We're glad you're back, and we're glad you're happy with your mom. And we wish you all Thank a very you. happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. And Merry Christmas, too. That'll be coming <laughs> up soon. Yeah. We're going to be back with another Thanksgiving story right after this. Stay tuned. Yeah. We'll let you you know, guys are probably great. never go back to police work. You'll probably never be able to ride your motorcycle again. You'll probably never be able to do a lot of the things that they told me I wouldn't be able to do. Um, I'm glad I can prove them wrong that, you know, I am coming back to police work. I do ride. It was one of the most dramatic and heart-wrenching ordeals involving police officers that anyone can remember. In July of 1995, a man held two teenage sisters captive in their plantation home. After dousing them and himself with gasoline, he struck a match. Officers Jim O'Hara and Joe Alou burst into the room, but it was too late. The room was an inferno and the policemen were trapped. A third officer, Robin Massey, was able to pull them out, but the girls and their captor died. The road to recovery for both officers has been arduous and painful. But out of tragedy, sometimes come hope and a new direction to one's life. Since the incident, Jim O'Hara, Joe Alou, and Joe's wife, Sheila, have spearheaded a national effort to create laws requiring greater insurance protection for police and firefighters injured in the line of duty. In September, the Alou O'Hara bill was signed by the president. And last Christmas, looking to do more for those in need, Joe and Sheila hosted a dinner for foster children at Planet Hollywood. Last month, Alou, O'Hara, and Massey were honored at the White House as three of the nation's top cops. And just last month, Joe Alou went back to work for the Plantation Police Department. And Joe is joining us now, and it's sure good to have you here, up close and personal here. Thank you. Um, you look wonderful. You feel terrific now, I assume? Yeah, I'm feeling uh, pretty good. 
really not too bad. You know, the pain level is still there, but all in all, everything's going along real well. So this is something where you're still in pain now a year and a half later. Right, yeah, it just doesn't seem to go away. It takes a, a long time for it to go away. Uh -huh. What do you remember about that day? <sighs> Boy, um, well, I remember going to the call and getting there and, you know, going inside the house and trying to get the two girls out. And after that, I just remember walking down the street of the house and being thrown in the back of a police car and taken to the hospital. That was it. Mm -hmm. what, what's your first memory of waking up in the hospital? I didn't know where I was. I didn't know where I was. Uh, you know, I just looked around. I, I thought that I was still in plantation, but they told me I was at Jackson, so I was mm -hmm. down in Miami. Right. You must have been in excruciating pain at that point. Yeah, they, they had me pretty sedated and everything. And um, I mean, you can, you can still feel it, no matter how much pain medication they give you with a burn type injury, it's one of the worst, and you, you feel everything all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, what is that you're wearing? Those are like kind of like a stocking. Yeah, these are uh, my pressure garments, which I wear like 23 hours out of the day. And what they do is they just keep constant pressure on the scar tissue so that when it heals, that all the skin will be flattened. Uh -huh. You're back to work now. Right, back to work. How does that feel to be back? Well, it was great. It's great going back. The department has uh, stood behind me 100%, and it's a, it's a good feeling to be back. I love it. Mm -hmm. At what point did you realize that your health care was in jeopardy? I think I was just transferred um, from intensive care to the actual burn center mm -hmm. and um, that's when I was told that uh, if I was unable to go back to work that we would no longer be able to have health insurance through the city. And what was your reaction to that? I was in kind of shock, you know, I was yeah. still heavily medicated and I was trying to understand. Uh, I was like, no, you, you know, you have to be wrong and they're like, no, it's the way it is. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people when we first heard your story um, and, and you and Sheila's efforts to have this law changed or have it made into law that you would be covered um, on a permanent disability, I think most people were surprised that that wasn't already true for police officers and firefighters. Right. In some states, in some areas and stuff, it, it was true. At least the uh, police officer themselves would have been covered. and. It was just a tragic thing that as the further south you go in the United States, the less the coverage was. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a definite problem for us, you know, with children and everything else. You know, we needed the insurance coverage. So you got this signed into law by the president. Yes, we did. That must have felt pretty good. <laughs> well, that was, that was a tremendous thing. You know, for, first we worked on uh, the city of Plantation with the help of thousands of people who rode into the city. And then we uh, went up to Tallahassee and got the law passed for the state of Florida. Uh -huh. And then from there we went up to the White House. Uh -huh. They say uh, one man can't change the world, <laughs> but in many ways you did. Well, I, I don't consider it one person. I, I think everyone out there helped us, you know, a real lot. I mean, the letters, the faxes, and everything else that were sent up there, they saw there was a lot of support for the bill. Right. And, and how is Jim doing now? Well, he's still had his complications. He still goes up and down a lot, but he's a real strong individual, and um, I think he's going to do just fine. Mm -hmm. Do you talk to him a lot? Do you see him a lot? Um, I see him at therapy every once in a while. You know, we um, have the same therapist. We have a different schedule now that I'm back to work. Um, I called his house last night, but he was kind of tired, so he couldn't come to the phone. Mm -hmm. Jim is in therapy, like, uh, what, all day? Pretty much most of the day, as far as I got it, yeah. He was burned like over almost 80% 80 80%, of his body? 80%, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you still have a long road ahead of you, but his road is, is even longer at this point. Right, yeah. I, I, have a, I have a ways to go yet, but Jim has a longer time to go, yeah, with uh -huh. the percentage of burns that he received. We're talking about three, four, five years? <sighs> at least. To be something like that. Yeah. How has this ordeal changed your life? obviously in many ways. Well, it, it's changed a lot of things. It's changed a lot of the ways I look at things. It changed a lot of the ways I, I, I deal with things. It changed my whole family life and the whole family structure that we had. It's just turned everything around where, you know, a lot of things that you just take for granted, everyday things that you do, you just take everything for granted. And now it, it puts on a whole new meaning to just simple little things, going home and seeing your kids and seeing your wife and everything. It's a whole new meaning. Mm -hmm. So as you think about or contemplate this Thanksgiving, um, a year and a half after you went through this tremendous ordeal, what are you most grateful for now? Well, I'm grateful that I still have my wife, my children, and everybody else, you know, all my friends still around me, and they're still supporting you. You know, it's, it's been a long time. And, you know, it's just, 
it's, it's been a hard time for all of us. You know, mm -hmm. we, we've all, not only, did, you know, I have to make changes, my wife had to make tremendous sure. amount of changes and everything, and the kids, it affected the kids too, you know. They didn't know what was happening in the beginning, and they weren't un unable to see me and everything. So it's been traumatic on all of us, but I think it's just pulled all of us closer together. Mm -hmm. Well, we're certainly grateful that we still have you as a police officer oh. here in South Florida, oh. and it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks, you too. We're going to be right back with more in just a moment. <laughs>